Want to speak real Danish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at danishclass101.com. Hej, jeg hedder Louise. Hyggeligt at møde dig. Hej, I'm Louise. Nice to meet you. In this series, you're going to learn basic Danish expressions. It's super easy and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you'll learn how to introduce yourself in Danish. There are only two sentences you need. Let's see how Danish people introduce themselves. Hi, jeg hedder Louise. Hyggeligt at møde dig. Hi, I'm Louise. Nice to meet you. Hi, jeg hedder Louise. Hyggeligt at møde dig. Start by saying hi, jeg hedder. Then say your name. Hi, jeg hedder Louise. Finally say, hyggeligt at møde dig. Hej, jeg hedder Louise. Hyggeligt at møde dig. And now let's see the same sentence in a different format. Goddag, jeg hedder Louise. Rart at møde dig. Hello, my name is Louise. Nice to meet you. Goddag, jeg hedder Louise. Rart at møde dig. So what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a closer look at these together. Hi has been substituted with an alternative greeting, good day, Danish for hello or good day. In a formal setting, you would say your full name, but it is better just to use your first name when you're being introduced to new friends. The hyggeligt in hyggeligt at møde dig has been changed to rart. When you meet someone in a formal context, for instance at work, rart at møde dig would be the most appropriate greeting, while hyggeligt at møde dig is for when you're introduced to new friends. One more time. One way to introduce yourself in Danish is Hej, jeg hedder Louise. Hyggeligt at møde dig. An alternative way to introduce yourself is Goddag, jeg hedder Louise. Rart at møde dig. Now it's time for Louise's insights. When you introduce yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands in Denmark. While rart at møde dig is slightly more formal than hyggeligt at møde dig, you don't need to worry too much about which one you use. If you use one of these sentences, Danish people are definitely going to be impressed. In the last lesson, you learned how to introduce yourself in Danish. In this lesson, you learn how to use good manners as you thank people. Er klar? Are you ready? Lad os begynde. So let's start. There's several ways to thank someone, so let's start with the easiest. It is just one word. Tak. Tak. Tak means thank you. When you say thank you very much, You just need to add mange at the beginning. Mange tak. Mange tak. Mange means many. So mange tak is like saying many thanks. During the last lesson, we didn't really mention anything about formality in speech in Danish. However, there are some subtle differences in how we will be perceived by others. Tak is the more casual way to thank someone, while mange tak expresses more gratitude, so it's slightly more formal or polite. A longer and more formal phrase, which expresses a lot of gratitude, would be Tusen tak skal du have. Here we've changed mange to tusen, which means thousand, and added skal du have, which literally means you shall have. Tusen tak skal du have. But how do you answer these expressions of gratitude? It's easy. There are basically two different ways to do it. The first is velbekomme. Velbekomme. Velbekomme literally means you are welcome. The other way to say you are welcome is the expression det var så lidt. Det var så lidt. Literally this phrase means it was so little and it's equivalent to don't mention it, but it's the most common and polite way to respond to someone thanking you. So when someone says tak to you, you can simply reply with velbekomme or det var så lidt. Now it's time for Louise's insights. If you're not sure about whether to use tak or mange tak, keeping it simple is always your safest bet. You don't have to worry about formal or informal situations. Tak can be used with just about anyone, anywhere and at any time. In the last lesson, you learned how to be grateful to people by saying tak. In this lesson, you learned some of the most common greetings used in Denmark. Er klar? Are you ready? So let's begin. So let's start. 
The most used informal greeting is hi. Hi. Hi means hi. You can use it when you meet people and it can be used with anyone. But it isn't the only way to greet someone. We also have good day. Good day. It is a more time specific greeting and is equivalent to hello. Literally, good day means good day. As a rule of thumb, you can use good day only during the daytime, from morning until evening. During the evening, we say go aften. Go aften. Aften is Danish for evening, so go aften means good evening. Finally, in the mornings, we say go morn. Go morn, which means good morning. Good day, go aften, and go morn are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say these again. When parting ways for a long time, we usually say, had a gut. He de gut. Had a gut means be well, but a better translation is all the best. Finally, in Danish, we have an expression meaning see you. Vi ses. Vi ses. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Danish. Let's review them all again. When meeting friends or someone we don't know, hi or good day. In the morning, good morning. In the evening, go aften. When leaving for a long time, had a gut. When leaving and implying, see you soon, we sees. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Louise's insights. In formal situations, Danish people commonly greet each other by shaking hands. On the other hand, if we meet someone we're very friendly with, no matter their gender, it's common to give hugs. Don't be afraid to try it out with your Danish friends. In this lesson, you're going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Danish, you will be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if their answer is no. Here's the most common way to say it. Taler du engelsk? Taler du engelsk? Danish is a pretty straightforward language. We conjugate verbs based on time, which means we have the past, present, and infinitive. The question, Taylor du Engelsk, translates as, Are you speaking English? In Danish present tense, speaking is Taylor. The second word in the sentence, du, simply means you. And you probably recognize Engelsk to be English. Taylor du Engelsk. To learn how to probably conjugate verbs like Taylor, please check out our Absolute Beginner series on danishclass101.com. You can find very detailed grammar lessons and resources there. Like English, there are many ways to ask this question. Let's look at another one that is also pretty similar to English. It's literally the equivalent of, can you speak English? Can du tale engelsk? Can du tale engelsk? Adding undskyld, excuse me, to the sentence would make it undskyld, kan du tale engelsk? Undskyld, kan du tale engelsk? The responses you will receive could be one of these three. Ja, yeah, meaning yes. Ja. Yeah. Lit, meaning a little. Lit. And nej. Jeg kan ikke tale engelsk, meaning, no, I don't speak English. Nej, jeg kan ikke tale engelsk. Since this last one is a negative statement, we need to say ikke before the verb tale. Notice also that the verb tale is slightly different than taler. Remember, the verb changes depending on the time it's in. We're now talking about the infinitive, since it's coupled with can which means can. Now it's time for Louise's insights. For those of you who don't just speak English, you can obviously use this question with any language you need. Danish people study other European languages at school, so maybe you will get lucky. Just substitute Engelsk with Italiensk for Italian, Fransk for French, Spansk for Spanish, Tusk for German. In the last lesson, you learned the phrase Unskyld, kan du tale engelsk? Which means, excuse me, do you speak English? 
We mentioned the word undskyld, which means excuse me in Danish. In this lesson, you'll learn how to use undskyld and other words when you're apologizing in Danish. The common way to say excuse me is undskyld. Undskyld. You can use undskyld in formal situations, such as when you're ordering something in bars or restaurants. For example, undskyld in kaffe tak. Excuse me, a coffee please. You can also use it when you're asking a question. Undskyld, hvor er Tivoli? Excuse me, where is Tivoli? You can also use undskyld to apologize for an action. Undskyld. Sometimes you'll hear Danes say sorry, which is a loan word from English, and it's often used as a quick apology amongst friends. Sorry. Another common apology is beklæger, which means the same thing when you want to excuse yourself for an action. Beklæger. Beklæger. All of these phrases can be used for either excuse me or I'm sorry, but if you really want to apologize for something, it might be better to use a slightly longer phrase. That phrase is undskyld, det er virkelig ked af, and it means excuse me, I'm really sorry, and it can be used in both formal and informal situations. Undskyld, det er jeg virkelig ked af. First we have the familiar undskyld. Next we insert the Danish pronoun for that, which is de. Then er, which means am. This is followed by the pronoun jeg, which means I. Then we have virkelig, which means really. And finally we have the phrase kill a, meaning sorry about. Undskyld, det er virkelig kill a. Now it's time for Louise's insights. If you accidentally bump into someone in Denmark, you might not get any response. But to be polite, you should either say undskyld or beklæger. It is also common to use the exclamation oh before apologizing. Oh, undskyld. When learning a new language, we sometimes have a hard time with things like procrastination, discouragement, or failure. But don't panic. With a good strategy, you'll be able to overcome these difficulties. Are you ready to discover the four habits of successful learners? Number one, optimize your time. When learning a language, it's important to dedicate time to your studies regularly, even if sometimes it's difficult. You're busy with school, work, family, or friends, but you can spread out your learning throughout the day. Study whenever you have small gaps of time in your busy schedule. This can be when you're on the metro, on your lunch break, or while you're exercising. Our podcast learning format fits perfectly into your tight schedule. Number two, consistency with your chosen method. There are a lot of options when it comes to courses and learning materials. Switching from one method to another can confuse you and disrupt your progress. Focusing on one learning method will make a difference. Our method has been created and optimized by real teachers, so you can stick to it with confidence. Number three, use your language background. Many languages share some commonalities. You can find words that look or sound similar, or even share the same grammar structure. A little bit of language background will give you an edge while learning. Number four, study continuously. People are excited when they start learning a new language. The enthusiasm usually lasts until the first roadblock. This can lead to discouragement and procrastination. But don't burn yourself out. Learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Don't try to learn it all at once. Break things down into more digestible chunks. Learning step-by-step step might feel slow, but it's an efficient way to learn a language. With patience, motivation, and good resources, you'll master the language. Remember, you can't learn a language overnight, but with motivation and these daily lessons, you'll be on the road to fluency. Want to speak real Danish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at danishclass101.com. Today, traditional classrooms are no longer the only or even best place to learn a new language. More and more people are finding that they can easily learn a language just about anywhere they have a few minutes of spare time, including their daily commute to work. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, the average American spends over 50 minutes a day commuting to and from work, or over 300 hours a year. But rather than simply sitting in traffic and wasting the time, you can instead use your daily commute to literally learn a new language in just a few short months. 
Our language learning program has specialized learning tools that you can use on your commute to and from the office to master a language in your spare time. What are some reasons traditional classroom settings just aren't the best option for most people in today's fast-paced world? Difficulty getting to and from class. Learning on someone else's schedule. Very expensive and may cost thousands of dollars to complete. Can take years to finally complete classes and learn the language. The simple truth is the traditional classroom instruction is simply not a viable option for most people in today's very fast-paced, time-starved world. Now, let's examine how you can learn a language faster, more easily, and at far less expense than traditional classes, all during your commute to work and back home again. Three reasons your daily commute can help you master a language in the next year. On average, Americans spend more than 300 hours per year commuting. During the commute to and from work, over six hours a week is completely wasted. The time isn't used to help you reach any goals or objectives. But thanks to online language learning platforms with audiobooks and other resources that you can access during your commute, you can easily transform wasted time into progress toward learning a new language. With over 300 hours available annually, your daily commute could provide you with enough time to gain significant skills in a new language each and every year. Increase your earning potential while commuting to work. How would you like to transform all those spare commuting hours each week into more money for a new car, house, or even a dream vacation? According to research, someone making $30,000 per year can boost their annual income by $600 or more per year by learning a second language. Over the course of a lifetime, that's a significant amount. How? From work-at-home translation jobs to working overseas, there are many ways to leverage your second language into more money in your bank account. So instead of wasting your precious time, you can make your commute more productive and eventually profitable. The more languages you learn, the higher your income potential. Repetition is key to mastering a new language. Not sure if it's practical to learn another language while commuting to and from work each day? Well, not only is it possible, learning in your car on the way to and from work each day can actually help you learn and master any language quickly. The simple truth is that repetition is absolutely vital to truly internalizing and mastering any language. So, if you listen to audiobooks or even audio lessons on your commute to work and then repeat the same lesson on your commute home, the information is more likely to be locked in to your long-term memory. Our language learning program has been helping people learn and master language in the comfort of their home, during their daily commute, or any place they have a few spare minutes of time. Here are five features of our program that make it easy to learn a new language while commuting to and from work. First, the largest collection of audio lessons on the planet by native speaker instructors. Every single week, native speaker instructors create new audio lessons. All lessons are short, to the point, and guaranteed to improve your mastery of a language. Second, the word of the day. Simply exposing yourself to new information and vocabulary terms helps increase your fluency and mastery of your target language. So every single day, check out the word of the day and memorize it during your commute. It's a quick and easy way to boost your vocabulary every day. Third, daily dose mini lessons. Have a short commute to work but still want to make progress towards learning more than just vocabulary? Not a problem. Our daily dose mini lessons are one minute or less and are designed to improve your grammar, conversations, and pronunciation. Fourth, all content is available on a convenient mobile app. You don't need a PC or tablet to learn during your daily commute. Instead, all of our lessons, tools, and resources are available 24-7 via our mobile app. That means you can access all of our audio lessons and other tools during your commute to work or anytime you have a few spare minutes. Fifth, audiobooks and other supplemental resources. In addition to the world's largest online collection of HD audio lessons, our language learning program has audiobooks to enhance your understanding and make it more convenient than ever to learn a language during your commute. The average commute time of most Americans is over 300 hours each year, and it's the perfect opportunity to learn and master a new language. Use the dead time during your daily commute to learn a new language and potentially boost your lifetime earnings. Whatever your motivation, our language learning program has the tools and resources necessary to help you learn a new language each year during your commute to and from work. 
So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! En mand og en kvinde taler sammen. Hvad vil de gøre først? Hvad vil du lave i dag? Jeg vil gerne ud og se en film. Okay, jeg vil se en baseballkamp på tv. Jeg vil også gerne ud og handle. Baseballkampen starter kl. 13. Okay, så lad os se filmen, og derefter kan du se kampen. I orden. Så tager vi ud og handler i aften. Hvad vil de gøre først? En mand og en kvinde taler sammen. Hvad vil de gøre først? Hvad vil du lave i dag? Jeg vil gerne ud og se en film. Okay. Jeg vil se en baseballkamp på tv. Jeg vil også gerne ud og handle. Baseballkampen starter kl. 13. Okay, så lad os se filmen, og derefter kan du se kampen. I orden. Så tager vi ud og handler i aften. En kvinde spørger en butiksassistent om noget i en bogbutik. Hvilken bog vil kvinden kigge nærmere på? Undskyld mig. Jeg vil gerne se på den bog på hylden der. Hvilken bog vil du have? Den om biler. Lige et øjeblik. Denne her? Ja, den der. Værsgo. Hvilken bog vil kvinden kigge nærmere på? En kvinde spørger en butiksassistent om noget i en bogbutik. Hvilken bog vil kvinden kigge nærmere på? Undskyld mig, jeg vil gerne se på den bog på hylden der. Hvilken bog vil du have? Den om biler. Lige et øjeblik. Denne her? Ja, den der. Værsgo. En mand taler med en butiksassistent. Hvilken skjorte vil han købe? Hmm. Hvilken skjorte synes du er bedst? Den hvide eller den blå? Tja, jeg synes, den blå er god. Den står godt til den grå jakke. Synes du? Men den går ikke godt med mit røde slips, gør den? Tja, ja, jeg er enig. Okay, så tager jeg den hvide, ikke den blå. Hvilken skjorte vil han købe? En mand taler med en butiksassistent. Hvilken skjorte vil han købe? Hmm, hvilken skjorte synes du er bedst? Den hvide eller den blå? Tja, jeg synes, den blå er god. Den står godt til den grå jakke. Synes du? Men den går ikke godt med mit røde slips, gør den? Tja, ja, jeg er enig. Okay, så tager jeg den hvide, ikke den blå. En mand er i en fastfoodrestaurant. Hvilket sæt bestiller han? Undskyld mig. Kan jeg få det særlige burgersæt? Ja. Vælg venligst mellem pomfrit eller salat. Salat, tak. Okay. Hvad vil du have at drikke til? Cola, tak. Hvilket sæt bestiller han? En mand er i en fastfoodrestaurant. Hvilket sæt bestiller han? Undskyld mig. Kan jeg få det særlige burgersæt? Ja. Vælg venligst mellem pomfrit eller salat. Salat, tak. Okay. Hvad vil du have at drikke til? Cola, tak. En mand ringer til lægens kontor. Hvad tid skal han være ved lægens kontor senest? Goddag. Hvad kan jeg gøre for dig? Hvad tid lukker I i dag? Vi lukker klokken 18. Vær så venlig at komme inden 17.30. Okay, tak skal du have. Hvad tid skal han være ved lægens kontor senest?
En mand ringer til lægens kontor. Hvad tid skal han være ved lægens kontor senest? Goddag. Hvad kan jeg gøre for dig? Hvad tid lukker I i dag? Vi lukker klokken 18. Vær så venlig at komme inden 17.30. Okay. Tak skal du have. En mand og en kvinde kigger på menuen i en restaurant. Hvad bestiller manden? Hvad bestiller du? Pizzaen ser god ud. Jeg tror, jeg tager den. Jeg fik pizza i går, så... Okay, så. Hvad med burgeren? Mmm, det lyder lækkert. Den tager jeg. Hvad bestiller manden? En mand og en kvinde kigger på menuen i en restaurant. Hvad bestiller manden? Hvad bestiller du? Pizzaen ser god ud. Jeg tror, jeg tager den. Jeg fik pizza i går, så... Okay, så. Hvad med burgeren? Mmm, det lyder lækkert. Den tager jeg. En kvinde og en mand kigger på et billede. Hvilket billede kigger de på? Dette er et billede af det fodboldhold, din søn er på, ikke? Hvilken en er din søn? Ham her. Åh, oh, han er den højeste. Jep, han er endda højere end mig. Hvilket billede kigger de på? En kvinde og en mand kigger på et billede. Hvilket billede kigger de på? Dette er et billede af det fodboldhold, din søn er på, ikke? Hvilken en er din søn? Ham her. Åh, oh, han er den højeste. Jep, han er endda højere end mig. Underviserne vil at lave en kage. Hvad kom underviseren i den? I dag det skal vi lave en kage. Først blandt smør og sukker. Derefter tilsæt to æg og bland det godt. Tilsæt mel og bland det forsigtigt. Sæt det i ovnen og bag i 50 minutter. Det var det. Hvad kom underviseren i den? Underviserne vil at lave en kage. Hvad kom underviseren i den? I dag det skal vi lave en kage. Først bland smør og sukker. Derefter tilsæt to æg og bland det godt. Tilsæt mel og bland det forsigtigt. Sæt det i ovnen og bag i 50 minutter. Det var det. En dreng læser op fra hans dagbog. Hvad var det første drengen gjorde i dag? Vejret var supert i dag. I eftermiddags tog jeg ud og svømmede i poolen. Og om aftenen tog jeg i biografen. Jeg studerede også hele formiddagen. I dag var ikke dårlig. Hvad var det første drengen gjorde i dag? En dreng læser op fra hans dagbog. Hvad var det første drengen gjorde i dag? Vejret var supert i dag. I eftermiddags tog jeg ud og svømmede i poolen. Og om aftenen tog jeg i biografen. Jeg studerede også hele formiddagen. I dag var ikke dårlig. En mand og en kvinde taler sammen. Hvornår skal de se en film? Hvorfor ikke tage i biografen på lørdag? Jeg vil virkelig gerne, men jeg har mit deltidsjob om morgenen. Hvad tid er du færdig med dit arbejde? Jeg slutter klokken 14. Så lad os mødes på caféen klokken 15 og se en film klokken 16. Okay. Hvornår skal de se en film? En mand og en kvinde taler sammen. Hvornår skal de se en film? Hvorfor ikke tage i biografen på lørdag? Jeg vil virkelig gerne, men jeg har mit deltidsjob om morgenen. Hvad tid er du færdig med dit arbejde? Jeg slutter klokken 14. Så lad os mødes på caféen klokken 15 og se en film klokken 16. Okay. 
Want to speak real Danish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at danishclass101.com. Tak for gaven. Kunne du tænke dig et stykke kage? Ja, tak. Her er et stort stykke. Mange tak. Det var så let. Undskyld. Må jeg komme forbi? Åh, oh, undskyld. Står jeg i vejen? Det gør ikke noget. Tak. Hej, jeg hedder Emma. Hvad hedder du? Jeg hedder William. Ret at møde dig. I lige måde. Velkommen til. Er du klar til at bestille? Ja. Må jeg bede om dagens suppe? Ja tak. Hvad kunne du tænke dig at drikke til? Kan jeg få et glas vand? Ja, selvfølgelig. Ellers andet? Det var det hele. Tak. Hej. Hej. Hvordan går det? Det går godt. Hvad med dig? Det går også godt. You are at a train station where you're attempting to buy a ticket for the express train from a ticket machine. Which option should you choose to buy a ticket for the express train? Which option should you choose to buy a ticket for the express train? The option on the bottom left is for the express train. Lynto. You are at a train station where you've just bought an express ticket. Which train car row and seat number are you in? Which train car row and seat number are you in? The ticket says that you're in train car number one in the eighth row in seat C. Row number eight, ordnerige, plus C. You are at a train station where you're reading the train schedule for an express ticket that you've just bought. On which days are there no express trains running? On which days are there no express trains running? There are no express trains running on public holidays and the third Sunday of every month. Officielle helligdage, tredje søndag hver måned. You are on a platform at a train station where you're waiting for your train. Suddenly, a message appears on the display. What does the message on the display mean? What does the message on the display mean?
The display reads, the next train will not stop. Det næste tog stanser ikke. You are at a train station where you're looking for the best exit to catch a taxi. Which exit should you take to get to the taxi rank? Which exit should you take to get to the taxi rank? You should take the east exit in order to get to the taxi rank. Udgang Øst You just got a text message from your hotel's pickup service. What does the first number refer to? What does the first number refer to? The number in the text message refers to the customer code. Kunde cool. You are checking out the hotel's facilities when you see a notice on a door. What does the notice mean? What does the notice mean? The notice reads, do not enter. Ing elgang. You search online for the nearest bus service. What bus service does the page show? What bus service does the page show? The web page shows a free bus service. Gratis bus service. You're about to enter a small shop, but there's a handwritten note on the door. What does the message on the note mean? What does the message on the note mean? The note reads, I'll be right back. 
Jeg er straks tilbage. There's a national holiday coming up, and you notice that shops have special notices about having different opening hours. From when will the opening hours return to normal? From when will the opening hours return to normal? The notice says that the opening hours will be back to normal on January 7th. Den 7. januar. Want to completely understand everything in your target language? In this guide, you'll learn the top 10 ways to improve your listening skills with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, take your very first lesson. The best way to practice listening is to just start listening. Expose yourself to native speakers as much as possible. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to get started. You can do the lessons on the site or on the app while you're on the go. Don't have an account? Don't worry. Just go to the sign up page to create an account. It takes less than 30 seconds and it's free. Then click on the play button on any lesson and start learning. Number two, slow the lesson down. Now, if a conversation is too fast for you, simply adjust the playback speed in the lesson control bar and listen to it again at a slower speed. This will help you understand every word. Another way to pick apart every word that you hear is read along as you listen. Just read along as you listen and you'll never miss a word. You can read along with the lesson notes or lesson transcript that come with every lesson. The lesson notes give you the dialogue, the translations, and in-depth grammar tutorials. The lesson transcript is the full word-for-word -word transcript of everything you hear. You can also read along with the dialogue study tool which gives you the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation, including the audio and translations. Number four, listen to the line-by-line -line breakdown with the very same dialogue study tool. What makes this tool so powerful is you can listen to each line individually and replay it as much as you want until you understand every single word. This is useful for mastering fast conversations that you would miss otherwise. Number five, Listen to the dialogue track. The dialogue track gives you the conversation of that lesson in the target language only, no translations. And you have this tool in every audio lesson. Listen to it and see how much you can understand. Number six, download the dialogue tracks and make a playlist. This is a great immersion tactic. Download the tracks to your computer or mobile device. Then play them on a loop to immerse yourself in the language and improve your listening skills. Each track is only about 10 to 30 seconds, so it won't take you long. Number seven, play the vocabulary slideshow. You get the slideshow study tool with all of our audio lessons and vocabulary lists. Click on start slideshow, sit back and listen. You can also play it on loop and immerse yourself in the language. Number eight, get listening assignments from your premium plus teacher. You can also get assignments covering reading, writing, speaking, and even listening from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You can get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number nine, take the listening comprehension lessons. These lessons are designed to test your listening skills. You'll hear a dialogue in the target language and based on the dialogue, you'll be asked to answer a question to check if you understood. There are no translations here, except for the subtitles. Read along with the subtitles to understand everything. Number 10, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons from absolute beginner level to advanced, then visit our lesson library. 
you get instant access to all of the pathways and lessons that will help you master all areas of the language, including listening. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. In this video, you'll learn three reasons you're never too old to learn a language, and you'll also learn three ways our learning system can help people of all ages to study efficiently. Number one, seniors have better focus. Learning a new language in your 50s or 60s may actually be easier than learning as a teenager or young adult. More mature adults can better focus on the details necessary to master a new language. Older people are also often more dedicated to their goals and put more work into achieving them. Seniors are better able to focus on completing lessons and reaching goals. There are a lot of distractions out there these days for young people. There's everything from Facebook to Instagram and all the usual drama of daily life at work and at school. Seniors are typically less concerned with these kinds of things and are better at focusing on tasks until completion. This is extremely important for language study, where regular practice and attention to detail are key. Not only are you never too old to learn, you may have some advantages over younger learners. Our language learning program has a number of special tools to make learning a new language in your 50s or 60s easy. You'll use the same resources as a tech-savvy teenager. Number two, learning is vital to healthy and happy living. Learning is actually vital to your health. Doing things like playing word games, doing puzzles, and even using online platforms like Luminosity do help keep the mind nimble. But nothing compares to learning a second language in terms of health benefits for your mind. Learning another language may be one of the very best retirement hobbies you can pick up. You can also apply your second language knowledge when you travel. Number three, there are health benefits to learning new things after the age of 60. Learning a second language increases the number of neural pathways in the brain. Forging these new neural pathways helps you code and sort the new language you are learning. In addition, there are other brain health benefits associated with learning a new language. Here's a list of benefits bilingual people can enjoy. Higher overall general intelligence, better memory and memorization skills, better perception of surroundings, better focus, concentration, and attention to detail. So in a very real way, learning a new language is one of the best and most practical retirement hobbies you can find because it helps protect against cognitive decline as you age. Now let's talk about how our language learning program has methods to make sure you can start learning in your 50s, 60s, and beyond. Number one, we have an intuitive, easy to use system. Learning in old age doesn't have to be hard or irritating. It can and should be fun. From your very first lesson, we'll make sure you're speaking fluently every day. You can start and stop each lesson as many times as you want. Study when you want, where you want, and at the pace you decide. Number two, you'll find special tools to boost retention and performance. As we mature, learning to use the right tools is vital to getting jobs done fast and right. So we make it easier than ever to make learning in old age fun and rewarding with a wide range of tools to boost retention and performance, including spaced repetition flashcards, so you can learn vocab fast, line-by-line -line audio transcripts, so you can read along with each lesson, pronunciation and accent review, instructor lesson notes, review quizzes, 2000 core words, enough for fluency, you are truly never too old to learn with more than 20 tools and resources to help boost learning and performance. Number three, you'll get support every step of the way. Although you may never be too old to learn, it doesn't hurt to have a little help along the way. Our language learning system has helped thousands of seniors learn and master a new language with help and support at every step. We offer 24 seven assistance. Just send us an email. We have dedicated language experts standing by to help you with any problem or issue you may be experiencing. There is also instructor feedback. 
have specific questions about a lesson or your progress, you can directly email instructors and get direct responses to any question you may have about your studies or lessons. Or try studying with your very own instructor. Members of our exclusive Premium Plus plan not only get a custom curriculum tailored to their very own goals, they also gain access to their very own language instructor. Learning in old age isn't just a luxury. It's crucial to helping avoid the onset of Alzheimer's, dementia, and other age-related cognitive issues. Specifically, learning another language helps increase overall intelligence and improve awareness, memory, and overall cognitive function. So not only are you never too old to learn a new language for health reasons, it's a great way to meet new people and start adventures. If you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. When learning a new language, everyone should have an ultimate goal to work towards. Whether you want to be able to connect with a relative, easily order food while traveling, or go somewhere new, having an end goal for your learning can be very motivating. A popular but challenging goal is being able to speak like a native speaker. It's difficult to measure exactly when you reach this goal, and it's not something you can pick up using textbooks alone. So how do you work on making your speech more natural? That's what we're going to look at today. Here are three tips to help you practice talking like a native speaker. Number one, focus on vocabulary. If your goal is to speak like a native, you might be really focused on speaking quickly or using as many complex grammar patterns as possible. But in our native languages, we're not always trying to speak as fast as possible. And we use complex grammar patterns when necessary, not to show off. Vocabulary, however, is extremely important to expressing ourselves naturally. Your choice of words can reveal a lot about you and your understanding of the language. Most learners have had the experience of using a phrasebook or a dictionary to find a word they want to use, trying the word in conversation, and getting a look of confusion from the native speaker. In some cases, although your word choice may be grammatically correct, the word may be inappropriate for the situation or totally unnatural. This is especially important in business and other formal situations, where the right level of formality and professionalism is key. Being able to understand nuances in vocabulary words can also help you understand relationships between people just by listening to the conversation. Try to listen to many different types of conversations. Listen to how people talk to their friends, their superiors, and in customer service situations. This will give you a better idea of how to talk to others naturally. In some languages, you can omit words from sentences or use more direct communication styles. It's important to be aware of these things so you can apply them yourself. Colloquialisms and slang are also commonly used in most languages. As this sort of vocabulary is always evolving, it can be difficult to keep up with the latest words. Talk with native speakers and consume media in your target language to make sure you pick up these kinds of expressions. Media is a great resource for your learning. Ultimately, knowing the appropriate vocabulary to use for each situation will really help you sound more knowledgeable. Number two, perfect your accent. With every language, there are unique pronunciation and intonation challenges. Some languages are tonal languages, and a change in pitch can completely change the meaning of a word. Then there's the fact that most countries have multiple dialects, and so people from one area of the country may sound different from those in another. So what is the best way to listen to a wide range of accents and different pronunciations? Video and audio resources are a great way to do this. YouTube is a perfect place to start because people from all kinds of different backgrounds upload videos to the platform. You can watch educational videos, daily life vlogs, cooking shows, a travel series, whatever interests you. Pay attention to the different ways people speak. Everyone is unique. And then practice speaking like them. This kind of practice can help you sound more natural. One note, please be aware of the type of resources you're using. For example, if you find a video where a speaker uses a rare dialect, it might not be a good idea to use that for your pronunciation practice, unless you have a special reason for studying a specific accent. As a general rule, it's best to try to search for practice resources that use a standard form of the language you're studying. Number three, copy what you hear. 
Do you remember how you learned to speak as a child? We rarely learned new words just listening to them or reading after we learned how. When we were little kids, we imitated the sounds we heard by repeating the sounds out loud. While you're talking to a friend, watching videos, or listening to audio in your target language, you can do this to try and replicate the way they speak. Doing this will help you work on mastering the flow of the language, your accent, intonation, and pronunciation. Of course, you might also pick up some new vocabulary this way. Make sure to repeat new words often. It's a great way to make sure you remember them. Try doing this using a number of different mediums and sources. That way, you'll be exposed to the diversity that the language offers and master the fundamentals of pronunciation. For example, you can watch and imitate several different YouTube videos and audio CDs, but try a few different sources, like different creators or different audio types, to make sure you experience a wide range of communication in your target language. If you're using our language learning program, you can even get your own teacher with Premium Plus. Your teacher can answer questions, give assignments, and even listen to your recordings and give you advice on pronunciation. Completing these kinds of lessons with a native teacher can really boost your confidence in your speaking skills. Becoming able to speak like a native is a popular goal for many people learning a new language. It feels great to be able to communicate smoothly, especially when the people you're talking to expect basic level sentences or broken communication. Try using the tips we've shared in this video to work on improving your speaking skills. Of course, it'll take time and persistence, but the reward will be more natural communication. And for even more tips on speaking, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to know how to improve your listening and speaking skills, be able to save conversations, listen to them as many times as you want, and learn hundreds of practical everyday conversations? Well, there is an easy way to do this. In this video, we'll go over how to speak more using the dialogue track. So, what is the dialogue track? The dialogue track is an audio track with just the conversation from the lesson. It's only about 10 to 30 seconds long. Let's say you're looking at a five-minute lesson about ordering food at a restaurant. First, you hear a conversation. Then our teachers explain every grammar rule and translate every word, so you know what it all means. That's where the dialogue track comes in. It gives you just the conversation. Here's what makes the dialogue track so powerful. First, you can quickly review the conversation without re-listening to the lesson. The dialogue track is just 10 to 30 seconds long, so it won't take you very long to cover both new and old information. This makes it perfect for a quick review of what you've just learned, and it helps keep it fresh in your brain. Second, you'll remember the conversations easier. Listen on repeat, like you would with a song, and the words, phrases, and grammar rules will stick better. And the more you come back to re-listen, the better it will all stick. Third, you'll speak more of your target language. So if you have 10, 20, or 100 dialogue tracks like that, then you have 10, 20, or 100 conversations that you'll know inside out and that you can use in real life. For example, conversations like catching up with friends, ordering at a restaurant, talking about your family, introducing yourself, and much, much more. Fourth, you improve your listening skills and can immerse yourself in the language. So imagine you've finished 20 lessons and you've downloaded 20 dialogue tracks to your phone. That's 20 conversations. You can create a playlist and play those 20 tracks and get used to the language and immerse yourself. To recap what we just learned, here's what you do to make the most of the dialogue tracks. First, after you finish a lesson, download the dialogue track. Save it to your computer or phone so you can listen to it on repeat whenever possible. Just replace three to 15 minutes of music listening for some language review. Next, if you've finished 20 lessons, you should have 20 dialogue tracks. Use those to create a playlist of these dialogue tracks so that you can listen to all kinds of conversations. And finally, try shadowing the conversations that you hear. This will become super easy once you've heard the conversation enough times. But if you're still struggling with a word or two, go back to the lesson and check the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation to find the words you need to practice. 
boost your speaking skills with the dialogue track and check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to speak your target language with confidence and impress native speakers? When learning to speak a new language, you have lots of things to think about, including grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. Because you're thinking of all of these things and trying to speak, it can be difficult to communicate with confidence, especially in the beginning. This is why it's helpful to make confidence building exercises part of your language learning process. In this video, you'll learn seven ways to boost your confidence. One, read out loud. This might seem pretty basic, but it's a great way to practice speaking. Reading aloud lets you practice speaking without having to think about grammar or things to talk about. Reading out loud lets you focus on your pronunciation and the rhythm of the language. It can help you learn to speak more smoothly and quickly without even thinking about it. If you're using our lessons, read the dialogue out loud as you listen. You can read along with the dialogue tool, the lesson notes, or the transcript. Two, read like a child. This might sound strange, but think about children learning to read. They go slow and sound everything out. Maybe it takes two or three tries before they read a new word smoothly, and a few more tries before they can read it at a natural pace. This example applies to language learning too. If you find a complex sentence in something you're reading, read it slowly at first, then speed up. With practice, you'll be able to say it easily. It might feel a bit silly to speak very slowly, but this kind of practice can help you identify tough sounds you might miss or say incorrectly when reading quickly. Three, use the dialogue breakdown tool. If you're using our site, this is a great tool to take advantage of. It breaks down lesson conversations into individual lines. You can listen to the audio for each line, learn what each line means, and can reread and review as much as you want. Four, Use the voice recorder to record and compare yourself with native speakers. Just click on the microphone icon next to each line in the dialogue section. You can use this tool to perfect your pronunciation if you like, but this is also something you can use to work on speaking with confidence at native level speed. You'll find this tool in the dialogue section of all of our lessons. Five, repeat and review old lesson conversations. Reviewing what you've studied in the past is the best way to make sure you maintain what you've learned. Go back to older lessons, download the lesson dialogue tracks, and re-listen to the conversations again and again. Or you can reread the dialogue lines from previous lessons until you've mastered them all. Six, shadow conversations. Repeat what you hear out loud. This tactic is important, but it can be tricky when you're doing a brand new lesson. If you're reviewing dialogues from lessons you've done know, it's super easy to do. Just listen to the dialogue and repeat what you hear. Shadowing means mimicking the speaker as soon as they speak, following their intonation and rhythms as closely as possible. Seven, send recordings to your Premium Plus teacher. If you wanna speak with confidence, there's no better confidence boost than feedback from a native speaker. And you get just that with a Premium Plus teacher. You can record yourself reciting a lesson dialogue or any dialogue of your own, and your teacher will give you specific tips on how to improve. From the tips your teacher gives you, choose at least one and practice, practice, practice. Being able to react quickly and with confidence in a conversation is typically not something you can do on your first try, but if you continue practicing, you'll gradually find yourself speaking with ease. And for even more ways to build your speaking confidence, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! When you start out learning a foreign language, everything is exciting. You pick up new words and basic phrases fairly quickly. The first time you say a greeting or answer the question, how are you, you might even get a little thrill. Speaking fluently doesn't feel that far off. And at this point, it really does seem like language learning isn't all that difficult. 
But after a week or two, things begin to change. After a few weeks of study, you start to hit walls as you're faced with strange grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. Everything about learning a new language seemed promising and hopeful before, but now you start to realize how difficult it's going to be. Speaking the language now feels like a long, far-off goal that you may or may not achieve one day. But don't let the innocence of being an absolute beginner or the disillusionment of being an experienced learner discourage you from learning. Speaking a new language may not be as far off as you thought. In this video, we'll look at three tips to help you practice your speaking skills, no matter what level you're at. Number one, practice with native speakers. Practicing with native speakers is by far one of the most effective things you can do to improve your speaking abilities. Think of speaking a foreign language as riding a bike. After a certain point, you can't read or theorize about how to do it. You have to actually do it. If you can practice speaking with native speakers who correct you and give good feedback, then you'll be well on your way to improving your speaking. But where can you find native speakers to practice with? If you live in or near a major city, there's a good chance there are some native speakers there. You might even get lucky and discover an entire community. Do a little research into the demographics of your city, or simply keep your eyes open the next time you go through town. You can also attend a language exchange or cultural event. Meetup is a site for local enthusiast groups, and there are usually some language-speaking clubs or cultural clubs there. If you're unable to find native speakers where you live, then jump online and find them there. There are a lot of free online exchanges that allow you to connect with other language learners from all over the globe via text, audio, or video chat. Look for a speaker who is learning your native language. You can spend an hour or so helping each other in your respective target languages. This is a highly practical and helpful way to learn. It's also a great way to learn more directly about the culture you're studying in a real way. Number two, devote some time to learning pronunciation. Pronunciation often isn't the first skill people think of working on when learning a foreign language, but that doesn't mean that it isn't important. Truth be told, you don't absolutely need a great accent to speak or understand every language. However, a decent accent can vastly improve your listening and speaking abilities in ways you might not expect. Being able to pronounce words and sounds makes it a lot easier for you to remember and understand new words simply by hearing them. If you can physically make a sound with your mouth, then you can mentally remember it. Once you have a good accent, the new language won't sound as foreign as it once did, and you'll be able to understand rapid speech, as well as pick up the definition of new words based on their conversational context. But how can you improve your accent? If you're serious about developing your accent, then you'll want to dissect the language's sound system into its individual parts. First by letters, then individual words, followed by whole phrases start doing some mild research on the phonetics of your target language. You don't have to get too technical here. Just try to get an idea of some of the main differences between it and your native language. Find out where native speakers usually put their tongue while saying certain sounds, or pay attention to the shape of their mouths when they speak. Is it open or closed? These subtle differences are what really help you improve. Once you get the letters down, start listening to native audio and compare your pronunciation to the native speakers. Our language learning program's playback feature is a great way to accomplish this. Take a phrase from a lesson and start by practicing the individual words, playing the audio back at a slower speed and then again at a regular speed. After comparing your speech to the audio, combine the words to make complete phrases, imitating the intonation of the native speakers. This precise method of pronunciation practice is one of the most efficient and effective ways to learn pronunciation. Number three, imitate, don't just repeat. Anytime you speak, do your best to imitate the native speakers you've heard and practice with. Match the way their intonation rises and falls. Pay attention to their word order. It's even a good idea to match some of their body language. This degree of imitation will probably feel weird at first, but it reinforces fluency in the language and breaks you out of the parrot trap where you simply learn and speak through rote memorization or repetition. This is a common problem that's often cited with other less effective language learning methods. Speaking a language is like playing music or dancing. You don't wanna just know it. You wanna live in the moment and feel it as you use it. You don't sit and think of what you're going to say in your native language before you say it. Why would you expect to do the same in a new one? Don't let ruffled expectations make you think that speaking a new language is impossible. 
Yes, it's difficult, but it probably isn't as difficult as you think it is. With a little determination and some faithful practice, you might be surprised how quick and how far you can progress. Use these tips to better practice the language and see real results in your speaking abilities. And for even more ways to practice your speaking, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.